afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, John Hi, Donovan in the, the Yellow Room in Oceanside. And uh, oh, good shoot. afternoon to Let our me... colleague and friend, Daniel Gutierrez. I'm going to hide my closet. In, uh, there we are. <laughs> in beautiful Sorry. Rancho Cordova. Cordova Palms. To be exact. For those of you that wanted to drop by. <laughs> So we invited Dan back. Dan was with us about a month ago, and uh, Dan's been doing a lot of work on fear. And in particular, he's been reading a book. I'm going to put it just a screenshot up there for a second. A book called uh, Deconstructing Anxiety. And he's found it uh, quite useful, Todd Pressman. And um, not just as an intellectual construct. That's kind of boring, but uh, certainly as a result or, or leading to embodied experiences and aha moments. So uh, I'm going to stop there and invite Dan to uh, share with us uh, whatever it is that you'd like to uh, like to have us know about your experience with deconstructing anxiety. Thanks. Um, uh, I've been uh, on the quest to um, to understand um, fear and um, how it's um, how it has this uh, ability to motivate me. Um, how I use it, how how fear shows up as a as a trigger for a defense mechanism. It's uh, it's the um, it's been the motivation, or it's the uh, okay. I don't even really like to call it fear. Um, I just call I, I'm I'm gonna call it the uh, body sensation that uh, I've been conditioned to 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 use. I don't know if I've been. Conditioned to use. Yeah, I've been conditioned to respond to in terms of uh, I'm feeling something. I get I get activated further, and then I then I create a behavior to keep to uh, to stop the, the original uh, core fear, uh, as Mr. Pressman uh, describes it, and. So I've been working with, with his principles um, that there's a, there's an experience that that I've had when I was a young child, and um, there was a moment where I made an agreement with myself that I would do anything not to re-experience that particular situation or that experience again. And um, I've developed defenses. Uh, I've conditioned my subconscious. I've activated the reticular activating sy system to uh, be on alert for this. And uh, I've done it so many times over and over and over and over. It's subconscious. And I don't realize that, that I'm already moving away from something um, because my subconscious goes, don't go there smells like looks like uh the original trauma original fear don't go there and i don't even under i don't even know what's happening and i'm moving away from it um which ex explains a lot of my life um i have when i get activated or i get into a situation um my first thing i feel some i feel I feel this energy inside of me, and the next thing I find myself uh, going outside, picking up the dog crap, mowing the lawn, taking the dogs for the walk for the fourth time today, uh, washing the car, doing laundry. I become a human doing to to uh, get myself out of this feeling. The world has to change so I don't feel this way. And the way I make the world change is by doing things so I don't notice the world. The world goes away temporarily. That's my that's my solution to 
re-experiencing this uh, fear or, uh, or what I call trauma. Um, so this morning, I, how things work out, um, I get up and um, I feed the dogs, I let them out and I sit down and my mind starts running. And it's like, okay, you, you know, yesterday you ordered a new engine for your car, but you didn't get a receipt for it. And I, I started, started building up the energy and it's like, wow, okay. I look outside, the grass is a little tall and it's like, you need to mow the lawn. And uh, pretty soon I found myself up and moving, doing cleaning, doing the dishes, wiping the counters down. And then I just go, oh my God, what am I doing? I'm in it right now. I'm in it. I noticed that I'm doing it. This is good news. Good news. So what do you want to do? I, I go, I just want to sit in it. So I went back and I sat down at the table and, um, I just started letting it happen. And, and then I've been, I've been also, uh, discovering that I, I I described this conflict that I have, this fear that I have is that I'm at war with myself. Um, I become the problem that needs to be fixed. And uh, so something inside of me tell me, told me that there's pay dirt there. I'm just not using the right word my truth. And then I sat there and I go, I'm, I'm my own. I am in rivalry with myself. And as soon as I said those words, I had that experience. I just started crying. I just felt it. It felt like it, it's just, that's the truth. That's the emotion part of the accountability tree. And I, and I just said it over and over. I go, I'm at rival. I'm in a rivalry with myself. And every time I said that, I just burst into tears. I go, I've got it. I'm, I'm, I've got the, I don't know what it, what it is, but whatever I'm saying resonates somewhere. And it's like, all right, we're there. So stay with it, stay with it. And, and boil down, you know, what uh, Todd Pressman, uh, one of his qu questions he asked is, you know, what am I going to lose? What am I going to lose if I don't, if I don't do mow the lawn, blah, blah, blah. And what it comes down to, I'm going to lose connection. I'm going to lose the link with uh, my mom or my dad, parent, caregiver, is what it amounts to. The look that I'm going to get either tells me I've maintained connection or I've broken the connection and I have to do something. Keyword is do something to, re to be able to reestablish that connection. And I, and it's just, it becomes clear. I mean, really clear, not a glimpse, but the curtains have been pulled back and there it is. I, yeah, my core fear is that I'm going to lose connection. And my core or my primary defense is to do something. Do the dishes. Mow the lawn. Pick up the dog crap. Sweep the floor. Wash the car. That's how I learned how to maintain connection.
and then uh, then it dawns on me, you know, you call you can call the experience of maintaining connection love, being loved, and um, I I sat there and I cried I cried and I go you know. I'm confused with and it's you know and then I'm thinking well you know treat people the way or treat people the way I want to be treated right I think that's the golden rule and I'm sitting there and I go I love my partner the way I see love as a, or I, I love my or I do things in, in an effort to maintain connection with her and she doesn't that doesn't what I, what I do doesn't matter and it's like love yeah love people the way they want to be loved Dan not not how you see love and it's like, holy crap. <laughs> and, and then you could look back and see your whole life. <laughs> that is just. All I've ever wanted to be is loved and hugged. And somehow, I, I've got it, you know, love equals confused with <laughs> rejection. And, you know, that that's what it's been. That's what, that's, that's, you know, that's what I create. But the fear is, is the real fear is that, is to, to connect with people, is to allow myself to connect. I'm not afraid of rejection. No, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to be alone. I know how to do that. My greatest fear is to be, to be loved. Because then, it, then I become vulnerable. And uh, it's it doesn't make any. I mean, I look at what I I've done, I've been thinking about this, and it doesn't make any any ro logical, rational sense to me at this point. And what I've been able to glean about this is that for me. I'm 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 in a I'm in a, a, a situation where my my motivation is to continue to try to maintain a connection and the tools and the skills that I have up until this point don't work. And so the logical step for me was to go, I don't know how to love people other than my way, which is to earn it. And, that, and then it's, there was a, there's a moment of, you know, exhalation of the breath and it's like, yeah, yeah, you, you don't. And it's like, okay, I intend to learn how to love. I intend to be loving. You know, just moments of clarity like that. 
but on the, the accountability tree, you know, be accountable for my behavior, state my truth. I I am at a I am my truth is that I am in a rivalry with myself. And that that like I said, it's just it makes sense to me. I feel that inside. I it doesn't I don't know how it how it functions for for uh, the audience or you guys, but when I say those words, I feel it. It means something. That's the connection now where I I don't know. I I deem it my body says yes. Yes. And the next step is, uh, what do you want? And I've been using that, I'm gonna say it again. I wanna continue to love and approve of myself. So in the middle of this process, the two dogs come up, one female, she comes up and just sits in front of me and pushes on me and puts her head in my lap and she's just, she's persistent. So I finally pet her and uh, I start crying even more. Then the other one comes up. He keeps pushing on me. <clears throat> and it's just like, I, I don't know what to do with it. Ah. And it's just like, just sit there. You're not going anywhere. This is the moment that you've worked for to get to is to be able to be present in this moment when you're experiencing this. It's like, God, you're going to stay here. Don't you leave. You know you're not going to die. Stay here. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And it's like, I need these, I need to be here. I need to be loved the way the dogs love me. I live in a, I live in a house that love means, love is unconditional. From the dogs to my girlfriend. And that's the lesson that is it's it's in front of me. Life happens for me, not to me. Just open your eyes and it's there, Daniel. And then my girlfriend comes out. She asks me what's wrong and, and puts her arms around me and, and for the in the moment I could just I just sat there and she goes, What's wrong, Daniel? And I go, Nothing is wrong. <laughs> Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Absolutely nothing. There's nothing wrong. And I still I'm getting that right now. I can, it's it's all the way to my toes. There's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. <sighs> And then the, you know, how much of this are you going to be able to take, Daniel? You know, uh, well, we're going to take as much as we can. Take a deep breath and, uh, you know, get up and make breakfast. And we'll revisit this later. <laughs> and, you know. I mean, I, I mean, last week I couldn't come because the, the people at the fence came. Three hours before we're supposed to have this podcast, I have this experience. Four hours.
Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm just glad that I can relate that. And this experience, I'm going to uh, say that it started with my inquiry into what my fear is, what my core fear is. And it's, and it's all good. And it, um, I, I'm really trying hard not to use the word fear. I'm just going to call it a, a body, bodily sensation that here that I'm coming to grips with. That doesn't mean that I have to avoid it. It's 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 perfectly acceptable to have this sensation. And the and the desire or the motivation to get out of this feeling. I give myself permission to do this. I give myself permission to sit still. That's another. That's another uh, part of his book. Um, you don't have to do anything. You give yourself permission not to do something. Not not to react. And that's where the cycle gets broken, is to break the cycle. Somehow create an intervention between the, the sensation and the behavior. Create that moment where you, it becomes apparent that there's a, there's a, a, a sequence and break that sequence. I don't know. That's and I think that that's for me. That's a very powerful lesson to learn. Is each time I experience a bodily sensation, I don't have to do anything. It's like I don't have to. I don't have to believe every thought that comes into my head. And for me, that's where I'm getting clarity is that I, res I, I react to bodily sensations without any conscious awareness because I've just, I've done it so many times. It's like, it's like the early warning system is, it's, uh, is always on and I don't know it. And when it goes off, I, I'm already I'm already doing stuff and moving away from it, and I don't realize it. And uh, in the old school, in the original version of the accountability tree, the barriers two um, was attitude. What what pay attention to what I move away from and move toward. And. Uh, No blame, no judgment. It took a long time to get here. And I, and I like the feeling that I have. I'm not at war with myself anymore. In this moment. Um, I'm not my rival. This is what loving and approving of yourself feels like and looks like for me. And even right now, I don't have those incurring thoughts. Yeah, so I appreciate 
the opportunity to uh, be here, share that, and uh, and I hope I hope that you understood uh, the energy that I dis displayed, you understood what I was going through, whether or not you understood the words that I, how I described it. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. Daniel, um, I, I just wanna say, um, that that was uh, beautiful, moving, um, whelming. Uh, I'm I'm in joy with you. Um, um, and uh, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. You've always been a model of uh, unconditional love for me as well. Mm, thank and you, you continue to be that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Marty too. Uh, a lesser human being would have dumped me a long time ago. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. I'd like to share a takeaway I, I got. I think it's the first time I've ever heard you say this, so I want to make sure I, I got it right because it, it resonated for me, which is I'm not afraid of being separate. I'm afraid of being connected. Yeah. And uh, so I had that holy shit reaction when you said that because I think that's true for me as well. As I looked at that, uh, and I, I, I looked at, just surveyed my own life as I was with you, listening to you, and um, seeking to learn from you, that uh, um, that's how this works. And, uh, but when you said that, and I don't know, maybe it's because we've been friends a long time, and, and we, we, along with John, and other folks that have worked with us in this process for the last three years or so, um, I don't feel, it's like you. what you said at the end of your share there is like, I don't feel particularly fearful of that. It's like, if that's the truth, then that that's where we start, that's where I get to start to work to the next level. Um, I've experienced for a long time what I call the internal civil war that, that, um, screwed up dynamic of what I really want, I really don't want. The love that I really want, I, at the same time, I really don't want it. And living in that yo-yo um, or that Chinese monkey trap thing where two, think, two contradictory things seem simultaneously true. And I I really resonate and appreciate that one way to uh, address that is just to be with it when it shows up and to sit with it and see what happens because there's nothing wrong. This is the way it is. Um, and I spent a lot of time in the book I've been writing talking about this is, this is this duality or this friction is a, a fundamental part of our entire reality. And that the gift that we have here and the gift that you just shared with us, Dan, is um, learning a way to accept this rather than fight it. And that's counterintuitive to me, even when those words come out of my mouth, because it means I'm, I'm committing myself to feeling um, 
being willing to feel this contradiction within myself and to be willing to live with it, explore it. And uh, so it brings me around to, I think the last thing you said um, is uh, I'm going to accept and approve of myself just the way I am, including with that what feels like a contradiction. What if it's not? What if it's actually the doorway to peace? So I intend to create a world of joy, peace, freedom, and community and see what happens. So that's my, that's my takeaway from what I heard you say and I appreciate it. Thanks, Marty. Not that I like it. Um, I recently uh, subscribed to a new channel on my Amazon Prime, and one of the one of the se ep series that this uh, channel allows me to do is they have all the the old Mission Impossible's on there. <laughs> so I think I'm on season four now, and. There again, I've been going, you know, why am I watching this? You know, I mean, what, what, what am I getting out of this? What's, and, uh, Mission Impossible, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, how they, yeah, how they go about it. They, they, they deceive people. They, you know, do these incredible things and um and it's like yeah i've been on mission impossible you know i'm 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 those guys trying to devise a way to get into uh into my inner uh understand myself and uh and all the all the all the villains you know all the bad people um Back in the 60s, they're all cloaked as the Soviet Union or, you know, they're all some Lat Latvian country with, you know, all those names. And it's just like, I have, if, yeah, the, the thought comes, it's like, if, what, what happens if I don't have an enemy? Oh, and then right away, it's like, you create one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like, oh, there we go. That's what I'm. That's what I do every morning. I wake up, and I, I, I'm I'm addicted to that body sensation, of adrenaline rush, or whatever you want to call it. I'm I I got to get my dose. So it's well. How do we create that? Well. We say we're gonna do something, then we don't do it. And then and then we have this struggle. We start beating each other up, beating ourselves up, and lo and behold, there it is again. <sighs> and it's like, I just noticed that this morning, the last couple of times, it's like, yep, there it is. You're doing it, doing it, doing it. It's like, wow, I've been doing this all my life and at the age of 60 I'm just now seeing it <sighs> wow wow okay I hold values as a human being I give myself permission life happens for me not to me what do you want I want to love and approve of myself I intend to love and approve of myself yeah there we go all right And it's like, I, yeah, I, I, was, I spoke in those terms. It's like, I'm not the problem. I used to, I, I have the mindset that I, I'm the problem. That if only I was this, if only I was that. And it's like, well, what am I doing? I'm looking for that smile in my mind, which means approval. Or that frown, which means disapproval. 
I'm looking for, I'm still connected or I'm disconnected. And, and, and that's, and that's what I'm afraid of, or that's what my body stimulation is based on. I'm either, I either have a firm attach or a, a solid attachment or I don't. Approval, disapproval, part of, not part of, want to be on the team, I'm not on the team. What do I do to get on the team? How do I stay on the team? And the, 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 the really, really impactful part was this is where I put my focus and my attention. And guess what happens when I do that? I miss out on life. That's happening right in front of me. And I can't prevent what I'm afraid of anyway, with, with the defense mechanism of trying not to create separation. Because separation, I'm not in, I'm not in charge of it to begin with. So rather than focus on fulfillment, happiness, and connection, I'm focusing on how to create abandonment and separation. Because I'm not paying any attention to the people around me where the true connection lies. Well, that and makes sense. That makes sense if, if what you're afraid of is connecting with them or us. Now that, that makes, that's just very clear. We're we're at the the nexus, and I want to I want to offer <clears throat> when I realized that um, the truth about my behavior was uh, doing everything I could in my power through my attitude, behaviors, and perceptions of other people that that I created rejection. Um, I I survived. Um, being ostracized. I survived um, being the odd guy out. I survived by, by not being enough. <clears throat> and then I grow up and everybody wants to, you know, get connected, get love, get uh, security. And, and the connected love and security was, was what this little boy was afraid most of because he didn't know how to survive that. He did know how to survive being not worthy. He, he, I could maintain not worthy. And in fact, if somebody came up to me and looked at me with a worthy look, I would do everything in my power to, to deflect it, to, to, to do something, say something, um, um, attack it even, and, and, then, and then get mad at those people for, 
for leaving me. It was like this loop in, um, I would I would come up with things like, well, people don't accept me the way I am. Well, I, I, and those were all the, 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 the story I created around this thing that made no sense whatsoever. So when I got solidly, clearly that everything I did was a posture for rejection and people complied. Sometimes it took a lot of posturing on my side to finally get them to go, I'm, I'm out of here. And then I would go, see, told you, and blame them. When um, what I was looking for, like I heard you say, Daniel, was right in front of me. And it was the thing I was most terrified of, intimacy and connection. Because I didn't, I, I didn't have that experience as a child. I survived being unworthy, not the right gender, not smart enough, not being an airhead. All these things I, I could maintain at least what I considered. Uh, I don't even know what I considered it. it it's safe. It was subconscious part of me that was working real hard to maintain the rejection because I can survive, which makes no rational sense. It does make sense to that little boy part of me that says, um, if you get too close to people, that's when you get hurt. Uh, I use an example and something I, I just wrote is that if, if I hear from somebody um, um, that's giving me, a, be a, I'm being chastised or punished or abused, and hearing them say, I'm doing this because I love you. And then um, that gets embodied in my little boy body. So when I hear I love you, that means something's something about to go down. I'm about to get hit, ridiculed, or ostracized. And then I, I'm in my adult body, and, and somebody around me it gives me an expression of, of love. I, I become suspicious. I, I actually feel my body backing away and I, I wonder at my own sanity or their motives. Like, what did you say that for? What do you want? And, and it's like, uh, I remember women ask me, how do you feel? And my response would be, what do you want? What, what, what are you looking for? I'll, I'll, I'll give you whatever you're looking for. Just, just tell me what it is. And because I had no idea that there was a feeling and the feeling of being alive as a child that was chastised, humiliated, ridiculed, and abused is the feeling I was most terrified of. So I created this aura of rejection um, and, and was stuck in that with, with no explanation. And, and the, the, the only conclusion I came up to was there's something wrong with me or other people or be suspicious of other people because they have a hidden motive. They're, they're about ready to drop something on me that with an expression of love, it's, it's insidious, it's tragic. Um, and my truth was mm, I have love mixed up with rejection. Oh my God. Um, when that clarity came to me and I got that people were only doing to me, giving to me exactly what I was asking them for. And some of them would refuse to reject. And then I'd have to work real hard to get them to that point of, I'm done, John. I'm tired. I'm, I'm exhausted. I can't do this anymore. Um, and they leave. And then I, it's like, oh, okay, see, told you. I'd love that. And, and, and I want to say these are, these are, um, uh, thoughts I'm having after the realization. It, without the realization, it's uh, women are this, I'm this, I can't maintain, I, I'm there's something wrong with me. I'm the, or I, I wouldn't even think any of that. I just go have a beer, get loaded, get um, uh, shit faced, and go, go on to the next. And wow, very powerful, Daniel. Very powerful. You know, I'm, I'm just, uh, 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 you know, I just keep coming up with, I can't believe, I don't understand, um, I don't deserve, 
I can't believe this has happened. And, you know, it's like, I'm right back into it is, is like, now that I've done this, I got to do it again. It's like, how do, yeah, it just, it just, it's like, all right, okay, you know, how did I get my girlfriend? How did, how did, how, you know, how did, how did that happen? How, how do I have somebody who has this amount of patience with me? And it's just, you know, and I want to beat myself up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why do I, why, why, what did I do to deserve this? And then it's like, okay, I just, I've got this. Now, what do I do to keep it? Right. right back to the old, right back to what I, what I know best. And it's like, ah, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. You, all I gotta do is be me. Mm -hmm. Because it's not what I do that she's attracted to. No. No. <laughs> oh, contraire. No. no. Well, so, but then oh. but then it's like, well, if if it's, and it's, yeah, it's like that. It's like, well, if that's not what she's attracted to, I'm fucked. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I'm a doer. It's like, yeah. Because I don't see the value and the worth inside me. So the, the women in my life would mirror that for me. And I, I couldn't handle the mirror until I, I got this. And, and I'd like to say at, at this moment for the people watching this, that what start, this for you, this for me and Marty, started with the question, what do I want that I don't have? What do I want that I don't have? And then going through the accountability process, going through the mechanism, the logistics of trauma and how that works on the, the survival mechanism and the reticular activating system, how those two things work together to maintain my survival, <clears throat> which is what they're, they're, they're designed to do. And then missing the part where if I own where I'm at without blame or judgment, this survival mechanism is appeased and I have a lucid moment to say it is my intent to be kind, it is my intent to be in a loving care, to maintain and sustain a loving care and nurturing relationship, which then adds to this, this body of information and I start finding myself being different. And, and then uh, these realizations come as I can as I can handle them or as I can embody them. And I, I slowly, sometimes quickly on this path of um, healing and awareness. And it's like at these moments, it's like, <clears throat> I use the analogy, I was, I'm a buoy um, that's tethered too, too short and I'm under the water trying to try and not knowing that, that there's anything else. And then suddenly the chain breaks and I pop up into this place where, oh, oh my God, oh, look, look. <laughs> it's like, wow. And, and my, my, I want more. Um, and, and what I've come to realize, how do I maintain it, it is to, to not do as little as I think I need to do and stay with the process, stay with the feeling, stay with the willingness to be accountable, willingness to be seen. Um, willingness to be vulnerable, transparent, um, because I, I have a demonstration um, in my life where I feel this connectedness that, that isn't threatening. Um, I remember people looking at me before my recovery and seeing this aspect in me and, and it was like, what, what do they see? And I was like, they were, it was like, and then I'd go away, I'd freeze, I'd lash out and and now i now i i see what they saw they, they saw this beauty in me as me as my manifestation and uh, now i can i can simply say thank you um for their either their compliment or their uh feedback and um connect 
Marianne Williamson said, our biggest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our biggest fear is that we're brilliant beyond measure. And this, what we're talking about is an example of the fear of our own capacity to love and connect because that's where we got hurt was when that connection and that, that's how we perceived it. And, and it was the truth. Um, so I'm gonna stop now, I'm gonna quit and just feel the bask in the grace of this conversation and this dialogue. Wow, wow. Um, one, one thing I'd like, I'd like to share that, that I forgot was uh, when that moment when, um, when I said that, you know, I, I, I'm in an adversarial re relationship with myself. Mm -hmm. And, and I just, I had the, the activation or stimulation or whatever, whatever, how are you, the emotional uh, whelming up. It felt like I just connected to the, to a universal truth about myself at that moment. Mm -hmm. This is just, just an old, old, old energy that that I don't. I, it's just I, I don't know. It's like when you say the words, it's like a a, um, a verbal combination lock that gets you know. You say the right words. Okay, I don't even want to say say the right words. Um, say the words because I've been. I, like I said, I've been describing that viewpoint or perspective, you know, like I'm the problem and, and uh, I'm in conflict with myself. I don't know how many times I've, I've said that, but when I, when I said the word adversarial, that just unlocked. And I knew it was the truth. Or, okay, I knew it was my truth. I, I, and that's all that's important for me. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, re reiterate that. So would it be fair to say that when you had that experience of truth, that maybe that's what loving and accepting ourselves might feel like? I mean, I'm no longer in denial. Because the barriers dropped. Um, it got plowed over. <laughs> I, I think when, when people referred to um, um, seeing through the veil, or seeing, dropping the veil. There's this um, connection with life as it is and, the, and, and the, the tragedy of where I found myself. Um, and at this tremendous amounts of sadness and, and uh, the, in the definition in, in the Living Intentionally or the Violent Cessation Workbook, the, Sadness is my experience of hurt healing. So this sadness about, oh my God, I've done it to myself. And the also the same moment, the feeling of immense joy as this is the beginning of the end. It's like the dawning of a new day. It's like the, the first sunrise I've ever seen is just incredible. Just incredible. I agree. And that's why, that's why you said you want more. So we can, we can set an intention for that. Well, this is a, a quick way to fill up an hour, Dan. I, I, Holy cow. I'm coming to the end of our time here. So I'd like to ask Dan and then John to uh, share any last words or thoughts summarizing. Um, your experience, Dan. 
Um, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I have, uh, immense, I have, a, I have immense gratitude for both of you being in my life and, um, never giving up on me. Despite my talents at getting you to do to do that, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for um, your capacity to hang in there. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Uh, First of all, Dan, you, you're worth it. Um, you're worth. You're worth. You have value. Um, I can. I can feel it. I feel this joy in the in the capacity to drop my jaw to <laughs> to to, um, to feel this, and it, it's like that. That's where I use to clench my anger so uh, so I through the sixth chakra and now that same place has this tr uh, tremendous amounts of joy in the um, in the sharing in the uh, coming together and um, for purpose um, and doing what we do and it, it is my intent to continue this um, journey of, of uh, discovery, self and other discovery. Um, it's like everything I do is in relationship to, oh, my, my trauma and wounding came in the presence of people. And, and I see necessarily that my healing comes in the present people, in the presence of people. And I, I am also um, grateful for you, Marty and Daniel. And the rest of the people that, that share this, look at this, are curious about this, um, and uh, wow, <laughs> wow, I want more, I, I want more. Yeah, um, I agree. Um, well, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much, and for those of you who might be watching this for the first time, if you're interested in participating in the group activities that we all participate in, uh, that's where the healing is done, as John just said, uh, with other people. There are accountability practice groups available on Zoom, Monday nights, Thursday nights uh, at 6.30 Pacific time. There's a men's meeting that Dan facilitates on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific time. And on 8.30 in the morning, Saturday mornings, uh, Pacific time, John facilitates a meeting. If you're interested in being invited to those, uh, any one of those meetings, uh, at the end of the podcast, there'll be uh, my uh, email address or John's email address. So please shoot us a note and we'll be happy to send you the invitation so you can come in, figure out, check it out for yourself. Join us in this work. This is one of those uh, activities where it's the more, the merrier. So Dan, thank you so much for coming on and sharing uh, what you've been uh, exploring about yourself. And uh, as always, John D, thank you for uh, teaching us all about accountability. Well, and we'll, we'll see you next week. Till next time. Bye. Got it. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Bye. -bye.